so this this I think uh, this will remain only as a recording for myself. But I want to explore some something that I, I just saw. I want to explore it a bit. Mm. So, uh, uh, so last week I think I was seeing this thing with the resistance. Like, why? Like how how resistance plays in within this current experience that we are having as human beings on this experience called Earth in this version in this way right now, because there might be other versions, but in this version in this way. So I was looking at oh my god, like resistance. Resistance and rejection and refusal uh, how they play in creating all this sense of materiality and time like resisting to become aware this is what I'm actually looking at like the resistance of actually becoming or living a certain experience in an aware way. Because a certain experience can be lived in two main ways. One, uh, it can be lived in an unaware way, or it can be lived in an aware way. So each experience can be experienced like this. Either a conscious experience, an o like where an awareness is fully there, present, awake, in that body in that mind in that soul and having an away awake not not like yeah like lucid lucid experience where awareness is awake and it's fully there with the experience and the other type of experience is when awareness is asleep <clears throat> and the body mind soul acts like an uh, automaton having an experience on its own, let's say, without the awareness being actually fully present and there. <coughs> <coughs> so there, there would be these two types of experiences. Now, what I've observed about these two types of experiences, well, how they differ, is that when there, there, there are two processes happening. These two, there are these two types of ex different experiences the conscious one and the unconscious one ah oh, i have to get this i have to get this call i'll pause and i'll come back okay so i finished with the call um now let's let me see where uh, where i was at oh, okay so i was saying about the these two types of experiences the conscious experience and the unconscious experience and uh, um, how they differ. Well, first of all, these two types of experiences, they seem like two different processes. They feel like two different processes that our being can two different activities i mean two different activities of our of our being that our being can sustain or go through so they they are not only like an experience but they feel more like activity like a certain process or activity of our being I had to pause again because the fans of the laptop had started to like blow hard and uh, they were making this sound and uh, when this happens the voice is not recorded properly. Anyway, so let me see if I can speed this up because the fans I think they will start blowing again. So, so what I was seeing right now is... 
so there are these two processes. It's the what seems to be the conscious experience and the unconscious experience. And it seems to me that when when we experience something but our awareness is not fully present not fully alive in that experience what seems to happen is that that experience is never truly consumed and because that experience is never truly consumed it you it's usually repeating itself in another form so what i've started to see is that there are these two types of experiencing something one is the conscious experience and the, the other one is the unconscious experience the conscious experience what it does is that it's not only that it experiences something but it consumes in a way the experience it when awareness is present and alive within that human being that is having an experience then whatever the body experiences whatever the soul experiences and whatever the mind experiences these three entities that form the human being is the body the mind and the soul and the fourth entity is the spirit which we can also call it awareness or being beingness mm. so when this being when this spirit when this awareness is alive within the body mind soul system which makes up the human being then whatever the body mind soul system is experiencing all that experience is um is taken by the spirit so all the experience that the body mind and soul is having here in this reality is consumed and taken in a way by that spirit that is alive within that experience and that experience is consumed exactly how we consume here food so that experience is taken by the spirit and it is consumed and it is processed and it is digested and it is integrated in a way and through that process of consuming and processing it and digesting it the spirit the awareness only when that awareness is fully alive and fully awake in the experience the following seems to me to happen There seems to be a certain thing that is extracted from the experience when the spirit is alive in that experience. So when only when the spirit or awareness is alive within that experience, there, there seems to be more than the experience itself. There seems to be a thing extracted from that experience, which I could call it the quintessential understanding or um, an essential quality, a certain essential quality, let's say, a certain quality, which I have yet to find the proper name for it, but a name that started to feel a bit right was the, the, the name of the gnosis. 
which gnosis is not only knowledge is a is a seems to me to be a different type of knowledge is something like an understanding an essential understanding a quintessential revelation a quintessential understanding of a specific thing related not only to the nature of what some someone has experienced for example if i am eating bananas i'm i might have i my spirit might de derive a certain gnosis or quintessential understanding out of this experience of eating bananas but this gnosis or this quintessential understanding will not be related to the experience itself of eating bananas so i will not learn anything perhaps new about eating bananas but i will learn or I, it's not even about learning it's about a certain shift in a way within one's being it's an understanding that changes one's being um once that understanding it is revealed so only by eating bananas in an aware way with a conscious spirit present in that experience of eating bananas one can truly understand things about of a higher nature of existence simply from eating bananas and this is a real thing like really real thing this is why there is nothing there is no so, such a thing as anything mundane that nothing is boring nothing is mundane you can find the secrets of the universe by drinking a cup of tea and that's literally true that's actually literal truth <laughs> it's, it's far from being a poetic or metaphorical thing it's actual truth um so any action once we start to once our spirit or awareness starts to be fully on fully online fully here any actions it stops being anything similar to mundane or unimportant or boring or it's the tiniest action even picking up a small thing from the floor anything starts gaining an incommensurable like Im immeasurable value to it anything any word one says the way one walks on the street the one the way one eats the way one does anything start, starts gaining an immeasurable value but that only happens when the spirit is alive in that experience if, if the spirit is not alive in that experience then that experience feels meh feels like mm, yeah I, I just went to the park and I, will, I, I just went to the bike to the park or I just ate some bananas or I just talked to that person or yeah you know because nothing extra is derived out of these experiences when the spirit is not present why because If the spirit is not present within an experience, an experience only remains an ex a, a material in a way, a blunt in a way, experience. It's just like it's just like playing a game on the on a computer. Let's say for whomever has played the game of Sims, if you, uh, the, the game of Sims is a game which I, I played when I was in my youth in my 20s it, it's a game where you have a simulation of like a real city with people and you can have your own avatar and you can have your own house and you can build your own house and you can interact with other people you can make relationships you can marry you can have children it's like a simulation of reality now what would happen in sims is that if me the player that i was sitting here at the laptop i would be engaged with my avatar in the game and I would move it around and I would do things with it. My avatar would be there and I, it would do what I would instruct it to do from here, from the laptop. But if, for example, I want to take a break and just, I don't know, somebody comes in the room and I can't play anymore, what would happen in Sims is that my avatar would start walking and doing things on its own. 
So it will not just remain freezed like that, you know? That would be weird in the game because it was a simulation of a real life. So, but my avatar would start just conducting itself. For example, if I was with my avatar outside in the garden and I was doing gardening with my avatar, and for some reason somebody comes in this room here, in this reality, and mom, mom comes and asks me something and I have to talk to her for 10 minutes and I can't pay attention to the game anymore, what would happen is that my avatar probably would go home in, in its own home inside and it would prepare its own meal and start eating and doing its stuff. So it would not necessarily, my avatar could sustain itself in existence without my help. But I would be able to play in a much more enhanced way if I was present because my avatar would only have some programmed choices, you know. It would just follow some programmed decision-making patterns in the game. So it would go to the kitchen if it's hungry, then it would go to bed in early in the morning, or, or late in the night, then it would wake up early in the morning, it would go to its job. It actually had all these things. It, it could do everything on its own, but it could not do extra things that it was like out of the programming, out of the usual programming. But I, if I would play with it, I could just take wild, I, I could make wild things with it because I, I didn't know what the programming of the game, I didn't know what are the rules necessarily and the limits, so I would go and try and taste and go and do things like unusual perhaps because I would be there and I could take different choices than the programming of the games or of the game. So this is how I see things happening in this reality here with this body, with this body mind soul being an avatar that is able to conduct itself all on its own, even if its spirit or awareness is not fully present in this experience of the body mind soul so if spirit or awareness is not present within this experience then the body mind soul can conduct itself fine on this on this reality but it will not be able to make the wild things it will not be able to discover the meaning of things it will not be able to push the limits because it will only act according with its own programs it will go to to eat it will go to sleep it will wake up in the morning it will do all the shards, it will have relationships with people, it will talk, it will walk, it will seem just like a normal new human being. But it will be run by the codes of the DNA and the codes of the soul, which is the psychic codes, the archetypes of the psyche, and it will run on the mental programs and beliefs, and it, all these programs, the physical programs, the psychic programs, and the mental programs will run everything for this human avatar but when spirit comes alive when spirit is online let's say and aware within this experience what happens what seems to me to happen is that there is a chance for the experience to gain a lot more dimension a lot more meaning a lot more value to it because why because there is a spirit now that is observing all of that and it's understanding things about that experience it's not just an experience that goes on by its own sake you know it's not it's not experience for the sake of just experience which remains only in capture day in the field of just experience recycling itself you know energy never is never created or destroyed only transformed so it's just this energy taking newer and newer and newer shifts shapes but never getting out of that field of or that threshold you know it's just an energy that is captured here in this realm and is just recycling itself creating newer and newer and newer experiences but without anything extra ever happening if there is no awareness or no spirit alive within that human being when spirit is alive and aware in that human being it seems to me that there is the potential, there is the possibility for that spirit to not only have an experience, but understand something through that experience. So it's not only experience for the sake of experience, it's experience for the sake of understanding, experience for the sake of gnosis, experience for the sake of extracting that, that quintessential qualia out of that experience. So then everything becomes meaningful. It's the opposite of nihilism. It's the opposite of 
the word having no meaning, it's almost like everything can become meaningful. Everything. Like drinking a cup of tea, taking a walk on the street, like just gazing, just just need, not e even needing to move, just gazing into something, into a wall, like blank wall, just gazing into it. Can, can really, one can stay like that for years, just gazing into a wall and but that experience is having a full amount of meaning. It's like ever increased revelations and understanding about oneself and the nature of being. So everything has meaning, in my opinion, after the spirit is alive and aware in the human experience. Now, the other thing that I'm seeing, and this what I've said until now seems to me to be a bit clear because I was looking at it for years, I kind of clarified it in my mind, but what I'm going to say right now is something that I just saw, and I, it's not so clear. So whatever I'm going to say from this moment on is just me speaking out loud about what I've seen 20 or 30 minutes back when I started this recording. So I have no idea what this is about. So I have to explore it out loud so I can see what it is about. Because this is how it works for my mind. Uh, I have to explore things out loud. I have to put them in this reality in order for me to see them. It's not enough for me to just explore them in my own brain. I have to extravert them somehow. Write them, record them. On, um, voice or audio or video or whatever, talk to somebody or whatever. But talking to somebody for me, it hasn't been an option because like who could I talk with about these things? Because at least in my experience, it ha there have, this, have been like, like I could count on my hand, on one hand, the people who I could talk and only about some of these things, not even about all the things that I'm, I was seeing and perceiving so um so i i only had writing and recording so i could extravert these things and i could get them out of myself so i can see them so i can arrange them so i can it's like a puzzle that you're personally needing to pull it out of yourself so you can arrange the pieces anyway so So this thing that I was seeing now, so whatever I said until now, it, I, it feels clear to me how spirit, when it is alive in the human body, there is more than the experience of life. There is a quintessential understanding that is derived, that the spirit derives out of the experience of life. Um, now, um, why there is resistance? Because, for example, what I what I started to see, like what I've seen, is that when there is there is this notion of resistance included in the formula of whatever I said until now. So, what does it mean? Resistance. Resistance means resistance to actually absorb the experience that one one is experiencing. As I said previously, if there is a spirit aware in the human being, then that spirit is capable of absorbing the experience that one is experiencing. And only through that absorption, by the way, isn't it funny how the word observe is so similar to absorb? Absorb, absorb. Like you could only almost like mix them up when you pronounce them. Absorb, absorb. It's the same, you know, to absorb, to properly, to have an awareness here, alive, that is able to observe what is happening. It means intrinsically to be able to absorb what is happening. So awareness is absorbing things within it. And this is how it is observing them. Anyway, so um,
if awareness or spirit is alive within the human being, that spirit has the capacity, has the potential, the possibility to absorb the experience that it is experiencing through the human body, through the human soul, and through the human mind. So all three types of experiences are absorbed within the spirit and only through that abs absorption, only through that consuming of the experience can the, the can that quintessential understanding or gnosis be produced. Because consuming the experience is similar to how, as I said previously, is similar to how consuming food happens. The experience is first taken, taken in inside the spirit, let's say, inside the spirit body. And within that spirit body, the experience is then digested, which means a certain processing of the experience that just happened. Uh, and after that digestion slash processing, what happens is that similar to how the stomach digests food, and it only takes out of the food some quintessential minerals and uh, other nutrients that the body needs. So the body, the, the, the digestive system in the body the physical body, what it does is that it takes food and it breaks it down and only takes the, the, the essential nutrients out of it and then discards the food. So the body doesn't take all, it doesn't keep all the food within. Actually, the most amount of it, it is being discarded and only the quintessential, the essential qualities that the body needs are being stored and added to the body. Similarly, this is how it happens in the spirit body in the spirit body in the spirit takes in the information that is gathered through the body through the physical body through the mind and through the soul and it is added through the spiritual body where it is processed that experiential information is processed within the spiritual body and that information after it is processed it is distilled or into an essential understanding into an essential quality, that that quality only it is kept, and the rest of the experience is it is discarded, and that quality is being added to the body of the spirit. Hmm. Now, when there is no spirit in the, when there is no spirit awake, or lucid or alive within a human being, what happens is that there is no processing happening. Because there is no entity there to process the information gathered through experience. And because there is no one there to process the information gathered through experience, it's like in the Sims game where that, it, that avatar, that body, mind, soul will just continue to exist and run the same type of experience over and over again because there is no one there to consume that experience. And there is no one there to make anything out of the experience. So the experience will just continue to perpetuate itself. As I said, energy is never destroyed nor created. It is only transformed. So the same experience will go away. Let's say you are eating a banana, but you don't have the spirit here present to actually take something out of that experience of eating a banana. And because there is no spirit here to process that experience and the, to extract the essential qualities out of it, what seems to me to, ha to be happening is that that experience just continues to be what it is. It shifts from being eating a banana to I don't know, walking on the street or it just morphs and moves and transforms. The energy moves from one experience taking the shape of one experience to taking the shape of another experience to taking the shape of another experience ad infinitum because if there is no other to process or consume those qualities within the experience, then there will only be experience that forever 
repeats itself, forever perpetuates itself. And I think this is visible if we look in the history of humanity. As I said in other recordings, I, I think I say this in other recordings that are published. Uh, like if we look into the history of humanity, even if we look like what happened, what we know of the history of humanity, like 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, what seemed to be drive, drive humanity 5,000 years ago seems to be the same inner forces, the same drives, the same type of experience that is driving humanity today. Like even if technology has changed, the clothing has have changed, um, the behaviors perhaps, the customs have changed, like culture has changed, the underlying human behaviors, the underlying human needs and feelings and energies and what like the instincts of what drove humanity or human being 5,000 years ago is not so different than what is driving humans today. It's the same tale of kill or be killed, the same survival this tale, the same fear or, I don't know, um, hate and betrayal and love and injustice and basically the same things are recycled over and over again through different and different and different stories, different and different and different societies and cultures and it's the same tale, it's the same story repeated over and over and over again because in my opinion there is no one there that actually listens and hears the story. There is no, There has been perhaps this is the only theory I have, that it, there has been little alive spirit in this entire cosmic story that has been there present to actually digest and consume and digest this story and make a meaning out of it, understand the quintessential understanding out of this story. And this, because there was no spirit there, there, there was little, the, the, the experience just perpetuated itself. The story has been telling itself over and over and over again through countless civilizations, countless cultures, technologies, and human eras. So even if we, if I look in the the, the so-called myths of the gods, like the Greek gods or the Egyptian gods or whatever, they seem to be, or even many other gods from many other cultures across the earth. There was always this thing that there was this father that it was killed by its son and then they had to heed the child because the brother it would want wanted to 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 kill the child and then the mother had to hide the child and then the child got like uh, grown up and uh, dethroned the, the the treacherous brother and all these things that were the gods of Greece like they were betraying the, one another cheating one another like making kids with all, all sorts of like women and it's like, they were such a like what it's, like, it's no different than what we see in our present society today it's the same betrayal the same fear the same jokes the same the same behaviors it doesn't matter if no one tells us that we are living in, and we are gods, and we are, in, I don't know, living on like the holy mountain or whatever, and we are living in a holy block of thirty stores or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't matter because the stories are the same. What happens in a thirty-store block today perhaps happened in Olympus Mountain, I don't know, ten thousand uh, or some thing years back. You know, it's the same thing. In my opinion, and the theory that I came to the conclusion, or perhaps the yeah, the, my the way I view things right now is that the only thing this would make sense if it would be if there was somehow I don't know how, but there might have been missing a true spirit that would was able to actually consume this entire experience that this entire cosmic story 
is creating over and over again. So it's like a cosmic entity, a cosmic being that is telling the story over and over and over again until somebody hears it, until somebody's here to hear it. And thus consume that information captured within that experience. And then after it has consumed the information, processing that information, digesting it, and thus extracting the quality, qualia, the essential qualia, the essential gnosis out of it. The quintessential understanding out of it. And in my opinion, if that quintessential understanding would be able to be derived out of it, then the story will have no, will have little to zero purpose anymore to exist. So the story will stop telling itself when somebody is here to hear it. And this is similar to one of these myths or tales of like, you know, when they said that, for example, there was this prince that was, that a spell has been casted upon it and it has been transformed into a frog and it would remain a frog until somebody is there comes and is able to see it and kiss the frog, you know? If somebody is there to actually see the frog, see more of the frog than the, the, the appearance, then if somebody would be able to see, to, to be there with the frog, to offer it some attention, then all of a sudden, if the frog would be kissed in a way, meaning embraced, accepted, what would happen? You, you would discover that, oh my God, there was a prince there all along. But you have to go past this, this initial repulsion, this initial rejection that you feel towards that frog, you know? And then the reward comes. Can come. I mean. So, this is similar to how I see this cosmic story. It's like, it seems like this crappy story that has been continuously telling itself over and over until somebody's there to hear it and to make something out of it, to extract the understanding captured within it. And for some reason, like intuitively, instinctually, it feels like, oh my God, man, there has to be like, I think there, the understanding, the, the, the quintessential thing that it might be captured within the story might be unimaginable so this is why i think that over time the so-called people for example like saints or um, jesus let's say or buddha or whatever people of this nature in my opinion what what these people might have done might have been able to do is that they might have come here on earth within the story with an alive spirit that was able to be present with the story, that was able to consume some of the parts of the, these stories and thus listen to the story. There might have been beings that came here on earth with, instead of wanting to just perpetuate the story and play within the story as actors in the story, they might have been beings that came here to listen to the story instead of playing in it and as it and continuously create more of it. So instead of coming here as a creator and create more of the story, there might have been beings that came here as, in a way, like observers or spectators or listeners. They, there might have been beings coming here to listen to the story itself, to give it their attention, their, their awareness their spirit, their being, to say, hey, I'm here, I'm listening to you, I'm seeing you, I'm here for you, you know? And just in that openness, just in that receptivity, starting to pay attention instead of trying to make something out of the story. Pay, just pay attention, just listen to the story, just be aware without wanting anything to add anything to it. Just listen to it the way it appears to be and the way it manifests itself to that being. So I think by, this, by doing this, some of these beings that came across history 
were able to somehow listen to the the story and kiss in a way a bit of that frog so, and by and by listening to the story they were able perhaps to consume some of the information some of the experiential information process that information and digest it and then extract some of that qualia some of that quintessential understanding out of it and because some of this story has started to be listened the story slowly has been able to be able to shift or change because once a message has been understood there is no sense to be repeated again because once you got what the message meant you got it you know it's that's it that's the end of the story once you got the understanding this is why every story exists right this is why we tell tales to our children or this is why we create movies or anything because we want to get a message across we want to teach them something we want them to understand something this is why we tell them something in the first place this is the role of communication you you say something because you want to deliver a, 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 an information once that information has been understood and received then there is no sense to give it again because it's already part of that being right so this is similar with this cosmic story once it is understood the message the entire message of it is understood there is no role there is little role to zero role left for this story to continue to tell itself because you already have the message that it tried to convey now where does resistance play in all of this uh, so resisting this is where resistance come, comes into the, the equation because you could be here with your spirit in this human body and if a spirit the spirit is not alive or aware in this human body what happens is that the human body mainly runs on the body mind soul system and the body mind soul system is incapable in my opinion to actually process information the body mind soul system is a, an actor an avatar of the story itself but the only one who can process information as i said is the spirit but if the spirit is asleep then there is no one to process information as i already mentioned so if the spirit is asleep There is no one there to absorb the information. There is no one there to process information. And there is only the soul. And instinctually, what I found about the soul is that the soul is almost the opposite entity to the spirit. If the spirit is there to absorb information and to process it, to digest it, and to extract the quintessential understanding out of it, then the soul is there to reject processing information the soul is there to resist any processing uh, the soul is there to not only resist processing information but to create more information the soul is the creator of information while the spirit is the absorber of, of the information if that makes sense in a way, we could, we could say that the spirit is the destroyer of information because once it's, it absorbs the information, it kind of like also destroys the information because the information does not exist outside of itself anymore, but it, it is absorbed within, so it disappears from the outside. But the soul is the creator of outside information. So the soul... The soul is the one that helps to write the story, helps to continue the next chapter in a way. If this cosmic story, as I said, it will only be the similar, a single story that continues, continually repeats itself, through the souls of human beings, this story continues to tell itself. So the souls of the human beings are the ones who continue telling the story, continue writing the, sto the story in newer and newer and newer ways. This is why the soul is the creator of stories. Cosmic stories, for sure, but still stories. So the soul is a communicator, you know. It communicates the story, but the spirit is the one who hears, hears the story and makes something out of it. 
So it's a partnership, you know. The soul tells the story, the spirit absorbs the meaning of the story. But if the spirit is not there and it's not alive, then it's only the soul telling stories with no one there to absorb it. And this is where resistance comes in because, as I said, the soul is resistant to absorbing stories. Uh, to absorbing experience or to make something out of the experience the soul only wants to create more and more and more meaning more and more and more information more and more and more experience more and more and more things it wants more this is where the more comes in from the soul the soul always wants more more stories more facets more depth of stories more uh, scenarios more plays more 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 always extending to infinity so the soul will never stop creating things because it is the creator entity. And the soul is, by design, in my opinion, created to be resistant, pushing against processing information. It's there to create information, not to process it. So it will resist. It will, be, it will even, if the soul is potent, in my opinion, it can even create a side device, a side entity that is it is designed to, in a way, inhibit, inhibit the spirit to be able to process the information. So it, it, it kind of makes it even hard for the spirit to wake up and start processing information. In this side entity, we could call it many things, but this side entity is the one that resists the processing of information, resists for, tries to create ways in which the story is not listened so it's a resisting device it's a it's an it's a part of the human being that resists hearing the story and by resisting hearing it it keeps the spirit asleep because the spirit if it awakens it will automatically start to pay attention to the story start to process information but this resistant part side part which could be called the ego or whatever, the, the little ego or whatever. It could be called many things, and I think it has been called many things from like the devil or whatever. It has been called many things, and it can be called many things. But actually what I see it to be is just a, a device of a resistance towards having the story processed, having the story heard. So this device of resistance, what it does is that it tries to keep spirit asleep because if spirit awakens, as I said, it will automatically start processing information. But if spirit is asleep, then it's only the soul who governs everything and the soul creates, creates, creates and everything stands fractalically in all directions. It's, it's only creation, 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 but with no processing. So it's just the story grows and grows and grows, but with nothing there to process it. And if this resistant device or entity is potent, then the story will be huge. The story, there will be so much quantity of information, but with so much processing power, so little processing power, that the story will become this begamoth, this, this entity, this huge, huge entity. It might be more huge than the cosmos. It might be... Oh, with no one there to process it. Because it's like a cancer, you know, that grew huge, huge, huge. And now it has to be processed. Like, where do you start processing that? You know, so much quantity of information. You need a really true, dedicated, alive spirit. And this is why I think, as I said, across the history of humanity, these pure spirits, dedicated spirits, might have came, entered into these human bodies and took up just processing some parts of this story. And as the story has been processed, the, it, it uh, became, it shrinken, it started to shrinken. And as it shrinken, it started to also shift because the message was delivered. And, and this is how the resistance play in all, plays in all of this. And the last thing I want to add is, related to will and how will play, plays in all of this so before adding the part of, about will i want to add the part i feel to add i mean the part about another thing about resistance is that cre it creates a sense of time so time only comes as a side effect of resistance 
towards processing the information. If the spirit and soul will be fully, let's say, equal in a human being, then the soul will create something and the spirit will immediately get the message. The soul then will create another thing, the spirit will get the message. The soul will create another thing, the spirit will get the message. It will be this dance and duo between them that, in my opinion, imagine that. Imagine how brilliant it appears, the partnership between the soul and spirit when they are working in balance with one another. The soul constantly creates information, which is brilliant. Like, oh my God, like, only to imagine how the soul is able to do that. It's so the soul is capable of constantly producing information, stories, and the soul, the spirit is capable to constantly be there to absorb information, to make a meaning out of it, and to extract the quintessential quality captured within that information. And to add that quality to the spiritual body, and this is how the spiritual body grows. So this is when the soul and spirit work in balance to one another. But if this, the, there is this cancer or this side thing that splits the soul from the spirit and makes them not see each other anymore, the soul remains on its own without knowing of the spirit and the spirit who knows what it does. But to us here in this realm, it seems asleep, but we are in the soul realm here. So we don't know what happens in the spiritual realm there. Uh, because we, we can only see things from this, this side of the things. Because there are two sides, you know. There, there is the spiritual side and the soul side. We are in the story here, in the soul side. So we see here that spirit is asleep. But we don't know what happened in the spiritual side. Where spirit might be awakened and the soul might be asleep there. So, anyway, anyway but... The spirit is not so present here in this side, in this soul, in this story. And, and, and because the spirit was not there, it's like the soul got bigger and bigger and bigger and the spirit remains small. Because there was this interference between them, this, this third entity, this resistor. It's actually interesting to make a parallel to the resistors in... Uh, resistors in the circuits of the computer boards. But anyway, so there was this resistor put between them, between the plus and the minus, by the way, the minus and the plus, the feminine and the masculine, the soul and the spirit. Uh, so there was this resistor put between them, and now it's like they got split. They, they can't, the, their currents cannot mix anymore properly. So, the spirit, the soul can grow, the story can grow, but there is no one there to process it. And this is where time comes in, because the sense of time only comes from resisting to process information. If, in, if the spirit is present, then we start to move outside of time, because spirit lives outside of time. The soul lives in time. The soul is associated with time, in a way. Even if it's eternal, it doesn't matter. It has a, it has a extension. The soul works through extending stories out of itself. So it's an extension out of itself, a fractalic thing, which creates a sense of time. Time is, in a way, the expressions of going, extending from the soul outwards. So the, the soul, through this resistor, creates a sense of time. It's this resistor, this resisting mechanism that creates a sense of time. This is why things appear solid and they appear to exist in time. Because there is this resistance to process information. But if spirit comes back here alive, then the sense of time starts to diminish because information is being processed all, every single moment. It's being, spirit is fully awake. When spirit is fully awake in every single moment, it's almost like zero time. It's only processing of information constantly. It's like constant processing of information. And because there is a constant process of information, the story shifts so fast and morphs so fast because we get the meaning that it almost feels like quantic time. It like feels like linearity of time is going out the window. 
this is where time comes in. So now the last thing that I want to add is the thing about will. So if there would be no resistor there, there would be between the soul and the spirit, the soul will create stories, the spirit will immediately absorb them. There will be the circuit between them, flawless circuit between them. This is the motor of life. This is the quantic perpetuum mobile of existence. This is the self-sustaining organism of spirit. It's soul creating, spirit processing and adding qualia to the spiritual body and enlarging the spiritual body and then going again. And this is the Uroboros, you know, consuming, right? Because the Uroboros was consuming its own theory. It was showing this exact thing that spirit is there to process and to consume the information the soul produces. So it's the two of them. Anyway, so um, when there is no resistor between them, these two entities, the soul and the spirit, they work flawless together. And this, because of they have this flawless nature to their workings, there, there is this constant, permanent, quintessential understanding derived and the body of the spirit grows constantly with new and new and newer quintessential understanding, with new qualias, quintessential qualias or noxus. The spirit body grows constantly. Uh, so everything looks all right, but when you introduce this resistor, then there is a split between the plus and the minus, between the soul and the spirit. Soul will be the minus, by the way, and spirit would be the plus. So when there is this resistor put between them, now there is this disconnection between them, between the minus and the plus. There is no flow between them now, and they disconnect from one another, and the soul sees it, itself alone. And the spirit sees itself alone, probably. I'm not so sure about this part because I'm only here in the soul realm, so I can only mainly see things from the soul realm. But I would suppose the spirit is also disconnected from the soul. In its own realm, in the spiritual realm, it might see itself disconnected from the soul. I can suppose this. I can hunch it, you know, I can feel a bit it's true, but it's a different, it's different in the spiritual Real in the spirits, in the spirits, in the spirit realm, it seems a bit different. Than, it's not so dark and it's not so forgetful as we, we it, it seems to us here. So, anyway, in any case, these two might get disconnected from one another the spirit and the soul. The, the flow of between them might be disconnected, and now the soul will create stories, but there will be no one there to hear it, to hear the stories and to process the information and to extract the quintessential understanding out of it and to grow the spirit body. So instead of growing the spirit body, there is only this growth of the story and grows, the story grows and grows and grows, but with no processing. And this is where the concept of will comes in because this what this resistor does is that it, it introduces a sense of time. It creates a sense of time because it creates a sense of un, inability to process information. And because there is no ability to process information, time is created. An overload of information is created, which equates for time to consume it then. And this is where will comes in also, because the only thing that can in my opinion, the only thing that can sur um, surpass, would that be a word that I could use here? Like the only, the only thing that can deactivate time is will. The only thing that can stand against time is will. The only thing that can stand against aware, uh, resistance is will. It's the power of will. And this is where the, the will comes in, in my opinion. The will is the force to go against 
the resistor. The will is the force to go against the, the pleasure, in a way, of resisting to process information. Because that resisting, it's, it's like, it's, it comes with two paradoxical things, pain and pleasure, together. It creates a lot of pleasure to not consume the story and also pain at the same time. So, the will is the only one force that I see that is capable of standing against that force of resistance, that force of time. Will means standing, summing up a force greater than creation that is capable of finding a love, finding an attraction, finding something more valuable than the pleasure of creating things and the pleasure of experiencing stories. And even though that pleasure of experiencing stories and creating things is enormous, uh, especially after the resistor is put in place because the story has grown enormously, finding something even more valuable than the pleasure of creating and experiencing and creating and experiencing and creating and experiencing perpetually, practically things. Finding a pleasure which is more valuable than telling stories, basically. And that pleasure, if reminded, and that, that not pleasure, but that, that other thing that can be more valuable than telling and creating stories, can be the reminder of what does it mean to actually be able to process those stories and extract the quintessential understanding out of it, the love for one's true self, which true self would mean a true spirit body. A reminder of, oh, I was here. The, the, the purpose of the story was to actually grow the spirit body. And reminding oneself of the spirit body, which we don't have words for. I'm just using this thing, like spirit body. But in reality, once this is unidentified and understood, oh my God, it's like, it feels like nothing can match this. What this spirit body means is like, oh, like, oh, you can't match that with anything from creation. So once that is remembered, then that love for that thing, for that spirit body, for that spirit reality, for that true self, can be the force that generates the strength enough, the will enough to stand, to, to, to awaken one spirit in that human body, in that human being, and to start processing the information. So will can only exist if there exists time and resistance. And this is how the force of will, in my opinion, is practiced and exercised. There had to be something that stands against truth in order for a muscle within the true being to be able to develop the muscle of will, the muscle of standing for truth. If there was nothing to stand against truth, there would be no muscle no muscles developed in the body of the spirit. And I think will is a muscle. Will is a muscle that exists in a higher or more true or not higher, because there is outside of dimensions. So more true, truer body, which is the spirit body. And this muscle of will might have only been able to be developed if there was a certain me mechanics that would stand against it. And th that mechanics would be the resistor that would create time and the resistance towards processing the information and thus deriving the essential understanding out of it and thus having the body of the spirit grow. But if something impedes that growth, then a muscle within that body 
can start to develop to re-establish that growth. And once that muscle is fully developed, it's like, in my opinion, there is nothing that would ever be able to impede that growth again. Once the muscle is developed, because it can regulate itself, its own growth in, in a way. I think this was, this, this might have been a purpose for all of this creation and the virus and hacking the system and creating the resistor. And it was like the body of the spirit learning to regulate its own growth. Instead of this process happening automatically through the Uroboros that would const constantly be the working of the soul and spirit working flawlessly together and constantly growing this body, now this body of the spirit might become, might gain its own self-awareness at its level and might learn to regulate its own growth, like sometimes growing, but sometimes not, instead of growing constantly, you know? Who knows? I'm just, like, right now, I'm, I'm just thinking in a way and putting out, out loud what I'm seeing inside. But I will have to look at it for more time, who knows how much time, before it can become, it becomes more clear to me also. So, yeah, I think this was it. I don't even know what this recording was mainly about. I think it was, it's, it's mainly about the workings of how spirit works with the soul how, what processing information means, why there is processing of information, why there is stories, why there is creation, and why there is processing of information, what that does, and ultimately, the development of the will muscle, of the will function within the, the body of the spirit. Because, by the way, will only, in my opinion, will only pertains to the spirit is a quality of the spirit itself i don't see will in this way that i have described it right now pertaining to creation creation might have its own sense of will but it's a different type of will it's more it's more expressioning power or mm, exp yeah a power of expressing a power of manifesting but that's not this type of will that i've described right now which is a muscle of information processing, a muscle of digestion, or a muscle of being able to digest information, process information. It's a muscle that regulates both creation and processing the information. So I think by disjointing these two entities, the soul, which was the creator, and the spirit, which was the processor, by disjointing them, the, the, the higher body that contained these two, the body that contained the soul and spirit, so it's a higher body which we don't have a name for, but let's just call it spirit body, that higher body might have learned to regulate these two activities and only use the soul spirit mechanism when it wants to grow. But if it doesn't want to grow, it can shut them off. You know, or who knows if this is 100% true, but it's something related to a certain regulation that this spirit body might have learned through this entire process. And anyway, to get it back to our level here and to our practical day-by-day -day thing, uh, how this relates to our day-by-day -day life is that Whenever we learn to keep awareness steady, fixed, full, present, aware, here in the experience that we are having, a certain processing of our own life experience is happening without our conscious awareness. So the spirit that is connected to the body-mind-soul system that we possess is processing that information. Our life information is being processed. But if we don't keep our awareness here fully present, aware in this human experience, then that information is incapable of being processed and it is recycled. It is recycled back into the system, back into the cosmos. And then it comes back in another form because 
energy is never created or destroyed, always transformed. So it comes back in another form. And if it's not processed in that other form, then it is recycled again and then comes back again and then so on and so on until it is processed. I could assume that human beings can go on an entire life without processing even one byte of information. Uh, I could assume that there are beings who come like these really determined, willful spiritual beings that come and process a lot in, I don't know, even 20 or 30 years of human life and then they just go away from this plane. Um, what else? Oh, okay, recycling. So when what does recycling mean? In my opinion, what I've seen so far. So recycling, when when the when the energy, when the experience is not processed, when the for experiential information is not processed, then it is recycled back into the cosmos, back into the system. In my opinion, the device that does this recycling is the mind. Mental chatter is the recycling. I will not get into the details now because this is a topic on its own, how the mind, mental chatter, works to recycle the information. This is an entire process on its own. But in my opinion, what I've seen so far is that this is mental chatter. Mental chatter all, only means the process of recycling the information. Once the information has been, has came from the cosmos, and has reached our body mind soul system and wants to be processed through our body mind soul system by the spirit within this body mind soul system the information is added to us so it is processed but if it is not processed because there is no spirit alive and aware here at the core of the human system then that information has to be recycled back into the system back into the cosmos and it is done so through the mind so the information comes from the cosmos, which exists in a, let's say, like story type of way. It is adhered, it is absorbed first through the body and through the soul, through the body. Yeah, it is absorbed through the body and it is transformed in a sort of like wave within the body. That's energy. It's transformed from a story that exists within the cosmos to energy that exists within the body. From that energy, it would have supposed to be consumed. The spirit might have needed to consume the energy and process the energy and drive that quintessential understanding out of it, create the essential quality out of that energy. But if there is no spirit, then there, if there is no spirit there, then that energy has to be recycled back into the cosmos, and that means it has to be created. It has to be converted again into a story and released into the cosmos. And this is how what the mind does. It's like it takes our inner energy and creates a story through mental chatter. It creates a story, it constantly says something. And by creating a story, it is launching it again into the cosmos as a new story into the cosmos. It's basically recycling. It's giving it back to the cosmos because it, that information couldn't have, has, hasn't been processed by the spirit within that being. So bottom line conclusion here is that as much as there is a spirit awake in a body, mental chatter automatically quiets down because as much as there is a spirit alive in the body, the experiential information is processed constantly, moment by moment. And so there is no need to recycle it back within the cosmos because you're using it. It is being used by the spirit within that being. So there is no need for mental chatter, which is only the apparatus of recycling information back into the cosmos. So there is no need to convert that energy within into stories once again and release them into the cosmos because there is spirit there that actually processes that, processes that energy and uses it as a substance from which it distills it and distills that substance into an essence which that essence is, I described previously, it is used and added to the spirit body as a part, an essential part of that body. So as much for what, how it boils down to us and our day-to-day -day life is that 
if we find within us this quality and this power of will, and not only will, because in my opinion, it starts from love, and I will keep myself from defining love, right? Who feels love, this true love that I'm speaking about, just knows it. And in my opinion, it should be left like that. Like, true love should not be explained. It should be, it's like, it's easy. Once you feel true love, you just know it. So for whomever finds true love within it, for whomever finds true love for its own true self, then it starts from that. It starts from true love. And that true love, and only that true love, in my opinion, can summon up the power of will, summon up enough force of will to withstand this entire cosmic resistor that tries to make the spirit asleep so it doesn't process information, so the story continues to be. So it's like this entire cosmic resistor is like a hypnotic device which tries to keep the spirit in a sort of dreamlike state of trance or hypnosis, where the spirit is like just lumbering around, it's like, oh, it's like on a drug or something. It's like, oh, what is this? Like, it can't, it's not fully awake and alive in order to be able to process what is happening to it. So it's like, oh, this is what this resistor is doing. And by the way, it has to do with sound, and it's much more complex how it works. So it works with sound, cosmic sound, like vibratory sound. And anyway, so uh, so when this the thing that this cosmic resistor is doing is seems to be doing, I mean, to me. It seems to be that it 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 puts the spirit in this state of lumbering, like hypnosis, trance, dream, like sleep. The spirit doesn't understand. It's like it starts identifying itself only with the soul. It only thinks about itself as the soul, as the creator. It continues to create and invest its awareness in creation and but without processing that. And just the story grows and grows and grows. And the time is expanded more and more and more. And this is only when in this sleep, in this trance, in this dream, in this hypnos hypnotic trance that the spirit finds itself in, it's only that true love within. If it is ignited within that being, only that sense of true love, unexplainable, unspeakable, undescribable true love, if it exists within that being, only that fire of true love can is like awaken like a dragon inside, this powerful will, this powerful force to withstand that trance, to, to wake up from the trance, to like rip it apart with your own hands, to rip it over your eyes with your own hands. Like it, it just... It has to come as an inner force from within, like an inner dragon of sorts. But it only, like the fire that ignites this dragon is only that fire of true love that has to be ignited within that being. Because otherwise, in my opinion, that being, like anybody can hear these words and any being can hear these words. But if that fire is not ignited, it might just oh, either hear them and completely understand something else than, than what has been tried to be emitted and shown through the energy of these words, either it might just consider them like, ah, yeah, like, ah, it's not, nothing important. So it will be forgotten. These words will be forgotten. And I think this is perfect in this way, because in this way, these words will only ignite and will only reverberate in a way in the, in, in human beings that have the same fire already ignited. So it, it's like a fire fire speaking to another fire. So, or perhaps the, these 
the energy of this fire might even ignite other fires. I don't know this. Like I have no idea. This theoretically, I think this could be possible. I don't. I have no idea. If this my words here have any effect of this sort. So, uh, but so to get back, if this true love exists within a being, then that true love can sum up the force to rip apart the trance and to stand against wanting to continue to dream, to dream, to dream, to have experiences after experiences after experiences with no processing of them. So it's only true love that exists within a being that can give it enough force to withstand this cosmic dream, to withstand this cosmic trance. Because otherwise the trance is enormous. The trance will, like, seems to be weighting us down And it's just a dream if there is no force within that can withstand the dream and can wake itself up. It's like the, the same amount of force that one needs to wake itself up from a grave. Like really like being buried within the earth and needing to like pull yourself off of that grave and they come back to the surface once again through your own power. So this is, by the way, this, this came to my mind right now that this might be the myth between of these these myths, the, the the by the way, the the root or the source of these myths, where there was a hero that had to go to the underworld to save somebody or to come back from the underworld, but it had to go to the underworld and do something there and then be able to come back from that. And some could and some couldn't. So like being able to come to this trance and then like wake yourself up all on your own, all through your own true love within and your own willpower. And if there is this true love within a being, um, and there is this force within, then I think this force can be put to use by using this will and determination to keep our awareness here at the center of our entire human existence and our hu entire human experience. What that means to me when I say this is it means that when awareness is here at the center, when awareness is here in full presence, aliveness, lucidity, there is stillness of mind and there is full immersion, availability, receptivity listening, absorbing the experience. It's like you're here for this. It's like I'm here. It's like I'm fully here for this. I'm listening to this. I'm here for you. Like if this would be a being, this entire story would be a being. It's like being fully there for it. It's like, yes, I'm here for you completely, fully, as much like with each second of each day, with each moment, I'm here for you. No, and just being there at the center and just allowing the story to talk, allowing the story to, to say through experiences its own message and just being there fully present to understand it. It's like there is zero other thing to do, in my opinion, for, again, for the beings that identify themselves with this path. Because this is, <laughs> this, this, this is, this is a Herculean path here. This is this is this is this really feels like it's more than in a way the hero's journey. It's 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 a path that is quite there in a way. So for those who identify themselves with this type of path, it's like the idea that I could say from my experience so far is like being present. And this is really, this is not an easy thing. It takes practice, it takes dedication. This is why it, it needs true love to exist within that being. Because there is, if there is no that, if there is no true love within burning within that being, there is no fire, there is no fuel to actually give it enough force to do, to extend all of this process. Because imagine that one needs to withstand cosmic forces. Because this is what they are. This is this is a cosmic story. This is a cosmic force that has been going on since eons of time. It's it's not 
something that happened in the last 10,000 years of man, these eons of cosmic stories being built. So it's cosmic forces, but true love, the fire of true love can tame and befriend these cosmic forces, but it has to be accessed correctly, this true love within. It has to be met with honoring and devotion and basically identifying that once this true love exists, there is nothing else. There is no other path. Even if we try to if we, even if we try to walk away from it, if there is no other way, like this true love will continue to burn, like burn everything down until we come here and listen to it and start to work with it and start to do the job in a way of Summing up the will force, do the processing, do the processing, because this is, if there is true love there, there is only processing to be done. There is zero other creation to be done at that moment. There is only processing of information and being available to listen, receptivity, awareness, presence, absorption. I'm here, like I'm here. So I'm here for this, whatever this is, I'm here for you, I'm here for this, it's like I'm fully here as much each day as much as I can. And that's when the mental chatter diminishes because, if, as I said, if spirit is here, fully alive, then mental chatter, there is no need for recycling information back into the cosmos. There is little need for mental chatter. So it's only like full immersion, full experience, fully here, making love with the story, basically. It's like an act. This, this is what how I see it. Like, when spirit is fully alive here, it's just an act of making love. But make this cosmic making love is something completely different than our interpretation of what love making is. This is this requires true involve, involvement, dedication. It's like it it it's it, it's it's a thing that goes on at all the levels of our being. It's not something that we just do because we heard it somewhere and it sounds nice. It's, it just, it just, there are so many mechanics that if we are not fully pure with our intention, if, we, if we are not fully, purely, 100% as faithful as we can, if we are not listening to our hearts and to what that inner voice, inner fire is telling us that we need to do, if we are, do not follow that 100% and we try to skew it and we try to imagine it or it will block us. It, it, it will block our path, and we we will we will think we have we have went forward, but actually we have turned backwards. So it will play with us. This true love only accepts the purest of the purest of intentions. Like this is why one of the workings that we can do as human beings is to purify our mind and our heart and to purify our psyche because as pure as as our psyche gets purer and purer it can listen to this fire it can listen to this love and as it listens more and more it can automatically more faithfully align with it because if there are impurities we can there, there can still be an ego there that can think oh i can use that thing and i can do it for myself for example oh oh i oh, oh, I'll start processing information because who knows what I will gain or I'll develop. And that's impurity, you know? No, here in the in the fire of the heart, you need to be 100% naked, pure. Like there is no zero other thing left than this fire, than this love. And nakedness, pure nakedness. This is why I think in the Egyptian myths, in like the Egyptian rite of passage of the dead, when a person would die, its heart would be weighted, weighted on a balance against a feather. So if the heart would be heavier than a feather, then that person would be sent to the world of the underworld or something like that, similar to hell in the Christian tradition. So it would have to remain there until it is purified enough or something like that. So yeah in the fire of the heart you can only if you want to truly work with the heart and the true love and the fire of the heart you you need to come as naked as you can it doesn't matter how scared one feels about that it doesn't matter if 
one feels unworthy because there would be many demons in a way inside telling, oh, but you're not worthy of that. Like, you can't be that naked. Like, you need to do what this other person does or that teacher says or that thing says. Or It will always try to, these demons, let's say, will always try to make one feel that it, it itself is, is not sufficient to extend and to be there with that true love. That it has to follow what that teacher said, what that what that person said, or how that other person is doing, or what those that system is saying it's good, or no, it's on the opposite. It's, true nakedness means to be to to engage the courage enough to stand as oneself, exactly as oneself self is in front of that true love within, in front of that fire. And says, well, this this is all I've got. This this is all I am, and this is all I've got. And yeah, I might not be the brightest, nor the smartest, nor the most courageous, nor I might not know anything of anything, but I'm here. Like I have willingness to stand naked in front of you and to listen to you. I have I have the availability well, I might not have anything of anything, but I have the availability to, to just stand naked here and accept to hear and to listen and that's enough that's actually that's it (laughs) so yeah so in my opinion there is zero other teacher there is zero other book there is zero other thing everything is here and it all boils down to the availability of just being naked and exactly as we are as a human being in front of this inner love and just stay there with all our faults with all our weaknesses, with all our shames, our fears, our powers, our whatever, just stay there and allow oneself to burn in that fire. Allow that fire to burn everything which is impure, which is insecure, which is not knowing of oneself. And that fire will burn those insecurities if it is allowed and invited to do so. And once that fire burns more and more the impurities, of one's psyche and one's being, then that psyche and that being can, human being can start hearing more and more and feeling more and more this true love within it. And that will give it enough force to be here present within the experience and stand naked again, but in front of this experience and absorb it and process it. And through that absorption and through this availability to be here in this world with this story available, Empty mind, not empty minded in, in, in the sense that we are not able to think reasonably or rationally, but like clear minded, better say, like fully here, clear minded, available for this experience, available to be present, to absorb it. And that's it. Whatever happens, happens because we need, we need to know and that that spirit there is processing information through our own. When we are here, when awareness is fully present in the experience, then the experience is processed by the spirit within. And that processing transforms the experience into qualia, into quintessential understanding. That quintessential understanding is that here, the spirit body. And it's everything seems more and more real, more and more transparent, more and more real. Can seem I mean, this way, can become in this way. And yeah, I think this is the end of this recording. I have no idea what I will title, I will put it, but I think it will be something related to this processing of information and true love or something like that. So yeah, this is this is it for this one.